Hello everybody, welcome to the Impressive Channel. The singer and reality star Tamar Braxton reportedly got released from her contract with WeTV. Tamar has expressed her discontentment with the network and she blames the network for causing a rift between her and her sisters and she also feels like the network has portrayed her in a negative light and also has affected her mentally. Not only that, Tamar was dissatisfied with how little she was getting paid from the network and she wanted to end her contract. However, she signed up to do a certain amount of episodes, so she had to follow through with the contract. Now, the network did release a trailer for her new reality show, Get Your Life, and when Tamar saw that trailer, it deeply disturbed her. Some sources said that Tamar Braxton's boyfriend, David, did not like the way that he was portrayed and he was upset by it. And this may have had a heavy effect on Tamar because this triggered her to attempt to end her life. Thankfully, she survived, but it showed how deeply she was affected by her situation with the network and it didn't make the network look good. And yesterday, Tamar did break her silence after her hospitalization and she still spoke about how the network affected her. She said in her statement, over the past 11 years, there were promises made to protect and portray my story with the authenticity and honesty I gave. I was betrayed, taken advantage of, overworked, and underpaid. I wrote a letter over two months ago asking to be freed from what I believe was excessive and unfair. I explained in personal detail the demise I was experiencing. My cry for help went totally ignored. However, the demands persisted. It was my spirit and my soul that was tainted the most. There are a few things I count on most to be. A good mother, a good daughter, a good partner, a good sister, and a good person. Who I was began to mean little to nothing because it would only be how I was portrayed on television that would matter. It was witnessing the slow death of the woman I became that discouraged my will to fight. I felt like I was no longer living. I was existing for the purpose of a corporation's gain and ratings and that killed me. Mental illness is real. We must normalize acknowledging it and stop associating it with shame and humiliation. The pain that I have experienced over the past 11 years has slowly ate away at my spirit and my mental. I will do everything in my power to aid those who from mental illness, including those whose mental illness was only a result from the toxic systematic bondage that dwells television. It was only God's grace and his mercy on my attempt to end my pain and my life that I'm here to utilize my voice. So that was just Tamar's statement on how reality TV and we TV has affected her. And she said she wants to make it her mission to make sure these networks use ethical business practices in reality TV. And she also wants to take some time off to focus on her mental health and also get professional treatment. Now, I do believe that Tamar was going through a difficult time mentally. And she did say that being on we TV triggered her breakdown. So WeTV did say that they released Tamar Braxton from her contract. However, they're still planning to air her show, Get Your Life. Now, Tamar went on Twitter and posted and deleted this tweet saying lies. No one has talked to a lawyer or to me, sent a flower or a card, text to me or nah. This is the abuse and lies I am talking about. This is not helping my mental state. They just won't stop until they see me out of my mind or dead. Now Tamar is creating a tricky situation for WeTV because I don't think they could legally hold her in her contract if they are causing her to have a mental breakdown. And Tamar has expressed to the network before that she wanted to get out of her contract. According to page six, she sent an email to the network's bosses accusing them of destroying her family and also making her want to end her life. She said, we fight each other, we betray each other, and now we're physically assaulting each other. All happening because your show, Braxton Family Values, has chosen to show the absolute worst side of a strong, independent, and successful African-American family. A show that I created to showcase a strong black family as a beacon of hope for all the young black girls and boys out there. Instead, you coached and conjoled us into finding the worst in each other. 
She also blamed the network for bringing up a painful childhood secret that she kept to herself for years. From the age of six to 16 years old, she was abused and assaulted as a child. And she said she hid that secret from her family, but she was horrified to learn that a producer exposed it in front of her whole family and in front of 100 crew members. Also, she was really upset to learn that the network brought the love and hip hop producer, Mona Scott Young, to produce her show, Get Your Life. An insider told Page Six that Tamar felt ambushed. She was invited to the network to have a meeting to talk about the show and the premise of the show. And right there sitting down is Mona, the person she said she did not want to work with. So Tamar was very distraught over that. And I think this is one of the many reasons why she wanted to end her contract. And she sent an email to WeTV two months ago, but they ignored it. And the only time they paid attention was when she tried to end her life. So this does make the network look really bad. Now, do I think they're totally responsible for Tamar's breakdown? No, I think Tamar Braxton had a lot of trauma growing up in her childhood and she dealt with a lot of things in her personal life that has built up over the years. And for all we know, she could be dealing with some issues in her relationship with David because rumors have been floating around that David is controlling. So if it's true, I wouldn't be surprised if that were also affecting her as well. So I don't think the network is 100% to blame for Tamar's mental breakdown. However, I'm not gonna lie and say that it hasn't played a major part in affecting her emotionally and mentally. But I do wish the best for Tamar. I think Tamar needs to stay off of social media. And also, I hope she continues to focus on her healing. Anyway, let me move on to the next topic. The actress, comedian, author, and activist Amanda Seals recently opened up about the real reason why she left the talk show The Real. Now, back in June, when Amanda first announced that she was leaving The Real, she didn't really go into much detail, but she did say that she felt like her voice was being suppressed on the show. She felt like she couldn't give a voice to black issues in the way that she wanted to. And she also had an issue with the way some of the producers were talking to her. She recently went on Instagram Live with the comedian Godfrey, and she went into more detail of why she really left the show. I have to give credit to the Neighborhood Talk 2 on Instagram for capturing this video. If you haven't, please check out the Neighborhood Talk 2 and follow them because they always give the latest updates on celebrity entertainment. So follow the Neighborhood Talk 2 on Instagram. But I'm gonna play what Amanda Seals actually said about leaving the real. Listen to this. Yes. So like when I was talking about leaving the real, it was like I left the real because I really it was breaking my spirit. Oof. Like in a why? How? I was being asked to not talk about certain things that I felt like that felt like a betrayal to my oh, people they would be. and oh, to yeah. person. Yeah. And, wow. And then on top of that, like, I just, I didn't want to be somewhere where I felt like I wasn't, people weren't being honest with me. You know, where people felt scared of me because of my black womanness. You know, like, I, I know as I say, this is going to end up on a blog, but um, I did a Smart, Funny, and Black game on The Real. And I was so excited to get to play a Smart, Funny, and Black game on The Real. And anybody who, who hasn't, is it sure what Smart Funny and Black is about? We are going to be doing a Smart Funny and Black show tomorrow night um, on a virtual show. So make sure you get your tickets at smartfunnyandblack.com or the link in my bio. But we were playing a Smart Funny and Black show, on a game on the reel, and um, they assigned it to the one white woman producer. But we have three black women producers and one black guy producer. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, why are you producing this? And she said, oh, because so-and-so assigned it to me. Wow. And I said, but why would you be producing this? You're a white woman. You don't understand what we're going to be talking about. Right. Now, she could have said, well, actually, I grew up in this culture, da, 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 if that was the case. 
there was another producer there who stepped in and was like, she was like, listen, we're going to work on it. And she proved my point because I'm new to this show. I need to work with somebody who knows the show because I know my show, Smart, Funny, and Black, and then you're going to help us put this together. And so, like, I couldn't stay in a place like that. Also, these trolls just used to come for me beyond comprehension. And they used right. to put me on the Reels page. And that was the part that was too much for me. Because it was like, that's like my work. It's like my space of work. And people are coming for me crazy. And they're not stopping it. And that Nobody was backed you. Nobody was on your side. Everyone was kind of like, did they kind of leave you with anybody, any of the staff, a lot of the girls on there going, hey, you know, sorry. Well, that's Lonnie, happened to you. Lonnie would definitely on Lonnie. Like Lonnie would a couple of times on the show. She was like, leave Amanda alone. Stop. Okay, cool. Cool, cool. But like cool. the the but that is where that difference came in. But when I said that to her, I said, you know, you don't do you even know what we're gonna be talking about? And she said, No. I just figured you were gonna talk about it and I would just write it down. Hmm. And I said, So am I gonna get a producer credit? Because to me, you assign the different segments to people who are going to be able to produce it to the best ability. And it's like, if we were doing a segment on like a Sabbath dinner, she was the one Jewish person on the projection staff. She should be in charge of that segment because she has the most expertise on that. Period. And I just was like, and so basically she went crying to somebody and said that I attacked her, even though I spoke to her. <laughs> the white girl move. So that instance right there is kind of one of the reasons why Amanda left. She wasn't happy on the show. One of the producers made her seem like she was problematic and she was constantly getting bullied by some of the real fans. So she just decided not to return. And I don't blame her. You want to go to a place where you're appreciated, not tolerated. Anyway, tell me what you all think about this video down below. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and share this video if you care. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.